Hi, entry level engineers in civil and structural engineering will have different kinds of doubts since they are curious. When they are more determined, they look into all minor details which they missed in the college education. Here is such a question which is very important to understand. Hi all, this is Premjit here from civilera.com. So in today's video, we are going to discuss a doubt again posted by one of our students in the forum. And here is the question. Good evening, sir. I wanted to know more clearly the calculation of 63 millimeter done in module 3 a definition beams cover to long reba groups and droid. So let me a bit more elaborate his question so that everyone who has not gone through our course also understand this. Basically while defining the beam section in the ETAPS course, I have chosen a effective cover or an effective depth for the beam based on the calculation of the effective cover. So he's asking a doubt on that part. So let me first tell you what effective depth means. Many of you might be knowing this. Many of you might know it in the right way that you should know and somebody might have just understood it in the way it is explained in the textbook without thinking too much deep into that. But the student is somebody who has looked into it a bit thoroughly and then asking something he has doubt on. So here effective depth means the effective depth which will participate in the bending. So here if you see I have marked the depth, the effective depth, it's to the CG of the rebar. Now from where? From the compressive zone. From the compressive extreme fiber to the centroid of the tension rebar is your effective depth. So here the main and the most important thing to understand is that a beam can have different effective depth at different locations. Now I have sketched a beam here. If you look at this if you have the central location probably let's discuss only about gravity loads at this point in time you have tension at the mid span and you are likely to have the maximum rebar in the center and as you go towards your support your reinforcement the second layer if you have can be curtailed in many cases so let's take that as an example so if you look at this particular section then your effective depth is from top to the bottom rebar center. This is simply because you have compression here and you have tension here. So in this aspect your CG is from top of the compressive fiber to the tension rebar centroid. I have only shown one layer of rebar here. I will come back to the two rebar and that's what his question is all about. Now if you are designing for the moment at this location say if you have 100 moment here and if you are designing for this 100 moment your effective depth consideration shall be as per this that is from top of the compression fiber to the centeroid of the tension rebar the same way if you are designing for this moment here say 120 here at the top then your effective depth changes it becomes completely different so if you have one layer at the bottom and two layers at the top then it becomes from here to the CG of this rebar so as a simple case let us now assume that you have only one layer of rebar then it will be up to the CG of that particular rebar so this will be the CG of that rebar so this is going to be the design for 120 assuming that you have only one layer of rebar ignore the second layer let's come to that later so this is how you design so this is your effective depth now for any chance if you want to design a section here for the bottom steel then it will be this which is your effective depth from here so based on your section based on the location of the design your effective depth varies now you may have a question here with respect to E tabs, then how will you define the effective depth in E tabs? So that's a limitation for E tabs because in E tabs you can define only one effective depth. But in most of the cases, your design governing for the bottom steel will be at the span. So you give the conservative depth here and possibly here you will only have a minimum steel for the bottom. Again, I'm talking about the gravity loads right now. So this will be your critical section. And if you give the cover, whatever you have here for the entire 
section it will not be a big deal because your moment here the bottom moment here will be very less and even if you define a larger cover here it's not going to matter larger cover means lesser effective depth so that won't matter much because you are designing here and that's your main steel and that's your maximum steel at the bottom in most cases and as you go away from the center then you will have lesser moment and therefore that may not even govern so slightly more effective cover consideration or slightly less effective depth consideration because of the single definition will not matter at all now coming to his question so here let me slightly tweak this particular section so assume that you have one rebar this is wrong but i'm just making it say the red color is say something like 12 diameter and say this is 25 this is wrong to give like this but then i am creating a situation to explain something so now if you have this what will you do what will be your effective depth so basically it can only be the cg of that so you will have to find the cg of that two rebar group so that's how you can do it so when you have a system like that say one bar like this and another bar like this you take cg about one particular point then you do a x bar equal to a1 x bar plus a2 x2 bar so you know that so this if you are basing this as the reference point then you can get your cg by doing that so that's how you do it so same way when you have two layers and you will have a spacer bar in most cases with a reasonably good side doing so there will be a spacer bar between the bottom and top layers what i mean is if you have a two rebar plan i'm drawing the plan here and then if you are wanting to put a second layer on top of this then you will generally run a spacer bar at certain spacing so that you maintain that gap between the rebar so on top of this you will lay the second layer you have a spacer bar here and then on top of that you are going to lay the second layer so you will have this gap also between the rebar so now the question is how do you calculate the effective depth so it's straightforward you have a cover of say 25 that's what the code says if you look at is 456 table 16 if you have a mild exposure your cover is 20 but generally it's a practice to give slightly more 25 you can go with the code if you are able to exactly meet the requirement at the site i generally specify 25 and it's common to provide 25 as the cover to rebars so in this particular case let us assume or consider that this is 25 now generally you have a stirrup diameter of 8 it won't be more than that or it won't be less than that 8 is a minimum diameter that we generally take and in most cases in a mid project you may not need 10 diameter it can be satisfied with 8 so based on your project it might change but then i'm considering it to be 8 so this means 25 plus 8 is already a figure there now let us assume this is 20 diameter and this is also 20 diameter so you can take conservatively say 20 plus 20 by 2 so i am taking to the center like this so you have 25 plus 8 plus 20 plus 20 by 2 so that's how i arrive at 63 now in case if this is 25 and if this is 20 and you have a gap of say 25 between that then how do you calculate the cg so again if you have to be exact then you have to do the group and do the cg so you know that you have a larger diameter you have a smaller diameter and there is a gap so you do the cg calculations you can refer any textbook for calculation of the c generally these two will be same diameter and these two will be same diameter not generally it should be so you know that so conservatively there is no point in being 100 percent accurate here because when you are defining your etabs in the definition area when you are defining in etabs 
you have not finalized anything you are doing a trial now after analysis and after understanding the forces you may change the cover because now we don't know how much is going to be you have a rough idea based on your experience but finally your rebar requirement might change so there is no point in being 100% accurate here so what i have done is i have taken an assumption that 25 is the clear cover 8 is my stirrup and 20 plus 20 is the maximum rebar that i might need so i'm defining it like that so i'm taking to the center of that two rebars and arriving at 63 now if you want exact you have to find the cg of that group and once you do your design approximately you will get say you got 216 here or 220 here as the rebar requirement then what you do you have to go and rationalize your cover definition or your effective depth definition you have to go back and change or reduce your cover to suit your design and then once more run your analysis and design and finalize your steel so that's what you can do the best that you can do in ATAPS otherwise you may have to do everything manually so here you can do that you can come back and then do the rationalization so reduce your cover and redesign if it is becoming more then increase the cover and redo the design so that is how you do it now sometimes there will be difficulty because you are defining b1 say one type of beam as 230 by 450 and say you have 60 number of beams which are 230 by 450 nobody would define b1 b2 b3 up to b60 and uh, have different covers so it becomes a very difficult task to define 60 beams and realize or remember which beam is were so instead of doing that i might go with one b1 in the initial analysis and then later group say something like this is the most effective way you can use if you want to design exactly everything in ATAPS so say you have one set of group where you have 216 now you may have another with 212 and 212 then you may have another with 216 and 212 so you decide slight differences you can group so maybe you you will like to call 212 and 212 so you may like to make this two into one group and call b1 because that's only a slight variation between the effective cover then you choose another two groups and then call it b2 and define the largest cover so that your design is conservative you should know that your design depends on the effective depth more the effective depth your steel requirement will be lesser lesser the effective depth your steel requirement will be slightly different so your conservative design will be when your effective depth is less conservative design as in you will get more steel when your effective depth is less so you should understand that so durability point of view more cover than needed is good provided you don't have spalling of concrete because lack of reinforcement so if you need only 20 and if you give 25 durability point of view it is good slightly more but design point of view you will get more steel so right cover is only needed so you need to fine tune that so don't think that more cover is always going to be good the right cover is what is needed you don't need more than what is required because your steel demand your requirement for design steel will increase so that's not needed so you can go with what is practically possible so this way grouping will help you uh, to more fine-tune your rebar requirement so in the first instance when you define your effective depth need not be 100% accurate because you are going to anyway change this even in the final design you need not do all this CG exact calculation you can be slightly conservative because anyway you are conservative slightly because of the grouping here you cannot have one design for every beam so i would say very well you can take a little conservative approach where if you have two layers you can take the if you have this as 20 and this as 16 
for easiness you can consider both to be 20 it's a slight change in cover increase in cover which will make your design slightly conservative so that understanding you should have and when you round off and detail understanding and appreciating this slight overestimation you have done then you can manage that so this will come with experience nothing to be worried about if you really want to start with exact calculations you can do that as well so thank you for watching i hope you understood what i mean and how you can group and what is effective depth in this video